Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back on a Friday afternoon with Russell Hanla. Um, we're talking about Think Tech Asia. We're talking about retaliative uh, tariffs by China. And we're talking about the trade war and how it's escalating every day lately. Russell Hanla, U.S. Senior Official for APEC in Hawaii. Welcome back to the show, Russell. Yeah, thank you, Jay, and uh, inviting me again. I know this is a very important uh, topic here, and uh, everybody's kind of concerned what's going to happen between U.S.-China relationship with uh, retaliative measure on the tariffs. As you know, uh, Donald Trump, our president, mentioned that uh, he's going to put tariffs on the steel and aluminum. Uh, I think that we talked about on the last show that roughly up to $50 billion. And what happened was China came back and retaliatively say that they're gonna put down uh, roughly up to $50 billion again to match up their ante. So with all the, our American car parts, our, our American consumer goods that we produce here, uh, they're gonna put uh, relative to, uh, tariffs on, on our, uh, made in American products when we export to China. Well, that was retributive. So he started something up already, which has had two or three strokes already. And the latest stroke is his stroke, right? 10 billion this time, yeah? No, I think he kind of mentioned the latest, uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the, what the White House spokesperson said, they're gonna might bring it up to 100 billion. 100 billion. 100 billion. But what's happening, it's not gonna happen overnight, because as you know, you have to go through the motion of, uh, right now, the U.S. officials and the Chinese uh, officials are negotiating and see if they can prevent so-called the trade war from happening. Uh, and we don't want to, you know, from tech to tech, you don't want this to escalate it even worse because it kind of affects our industry here. And uh, right now, what's happening with the stock market is not, you know, it's going down again and uh, you don't see a positive uh, outlook on it. Okay, so let's uh, go to the fundamentals. Why, why did Trump start this whole argument? I think uh, maybe he, the negotiation that with uh, our United States Trade Representative Larry Leitenhauser and our Secretary of Treasury, uh, Mr. Mnuchin, uh, I know that they're negotiating. Uh, and they're trying to see uh, which direction they should take. But, you know, putting an ante up to $100 billion is kind of too steep. And uh, that's going to really create a really a tension more and might possibly have a trade war. And I think what the Chinese are probably trying to do right now is see if they can bring it up to the World Trade Organization and see if they can mitigate that and uh, which direction it's going to take. Trump, but Trump has had the last stroke, the last threat. Uh, I realize from what you say that n none of this may be actually implemented in the immediate future, but... Um, the threats are getting pretty steep already. Um, and so uh, why does China have a choice on this? When Trump does his threats in a, a you know, tariff, um, whether it's um, implemented or not, um, does China have a choice? Does China have to do retributive, retaliatory, retaliative tariffs back on us, or can it just do nothing? I mean, what are its options when this happens? Well, I think right now with the China, I think it came on in, in the press and the uh, newspapers that the Chinese are uh, saying that and saying that in, they don't they want to prevent the trade war. But if it happens, they're really to uh, uh, they're ready to have one. Have, he wants yeah, to have one, but the, we don't want that to happen. Especially, it's going to impact here in Hawaii. So you know, we have our, a lot of these Chinese uh, descendants from China uh, living in Hawaii, and they don't feel too comfortable seeing the U.S.-China uh, going to a trade war. And I think it fix a lot of uh, the businesses as well. And we want to keep things in terms of uh, uh, openness and see if we can resolve the issues. Yeah, that's that's the point I wanted to get to. So. Um, you have a rub. Uh, he's he's uh, concerned. Trump is concerned that the Chinese uh, are not playing playing fair on trade, and that's probably also foreign investment. In other words, if I wanted to go to China and invest in a company, um, I have to go through all kinds of hoops. I have to have a joint venture in many cases to follow a lot of regulations, 
form a Chinese company, it's a real hassle. It's expensive, time-consuming, and so forth. And the Chinese government is all over me, you know, as I, as I expand my company. This is uh, hard for a multinational, but it's much harder for a little guy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as a result, you don't have a lot of little guy um, investment these days in China. Um, and, and that's not the case when the Chinese come to, to the U.S. They can buy into companies. They can participate in any kind of business. Uh, like any American citizen, there is no barrier, no, no distinction between them and an American citizen who wants to establish a company here. And they are. They do. And I think Trump, you know, included in his, his bag of complaints, if you will, uh, is the notion that's not fair. Um, that, that they should come around and, and let American investment in, let American entrepreneurs in, let American companies in. Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly what he has on his mind because I don't think anybody knows mm -hmm. exactly what on his mind, but, but I think he's trying to sort of soften them up mm -hmm. uh, for a negotiation that will happen later. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he's not, he, he doesn't know what position he's going to take in that negotiation mm -hmm. until he sees how, <clears throat> how they react mm -hmm. to his threats. Uh, and his efforts to soften them up. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, New York real estate yeah, style yeah. is what it is. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what he's done all his life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess the question is, you know, what are their options? I mean, mm -hmm. when, he, when he escalates this way, mm -hmm. what are their options? They have to respond, or is it a cultural thing where they don't like being stepped on? Um, why, are they, why is Xi Jinping taking uh, a line here that ultimately leads, that is leading to a trade war? Yeah, I think uh, from my you know personal experience, what I've seen with the U.S. Japan uh, uh, when they went through in the 1980s, uh, they were in the bricks of uh, starting up a trade war, and that's when uh, Prime Minister Nakasone and uh, President Ronald Reagan were negotiating on the uh, the impact of the uh, the Trade Act of uh, 301 provision, a uh, retaliation of. Uh, harming our American industry, so they're going to put, especially when, uh, with the dumping law, uh, kind of a duty act, selling their merchandise below the fair market value. Below cost, yeah. Below cost, exactly. Yeah. And I think in when China's case, uh, like our American business, when we try to do business in China, we have to show all our group, if you're, especially if you're going to have a product or in terms of technology transfer, we have to show all, all our uh, manifest or in terms of uh, blueprints and systematics so they can take our trade secrets and uh, not pay the uh, copyrights sure. or intellectual property That's part rights. of the gauntlet. If I, if I go in with um, intellectual property into China and have to have in certain industries like technology, I have to have a, a joint venture agreement. Well, my joint venture partners from China get to see my intellectual property. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what the provisions are, but after a certain amount of time, they will, they will have access to that. Next time I look, my joint venture is over, and my joint, my joint venture partner is using my technology and my intellectual property. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, why doesn't Xi Jinping say, look, well, let's, let's talk? Why doesn't Trump say, let's talk? Why isn't there an ongoing State Department diplomacy, you know, business hyphen diplomacy discussion going on right now? I mean, State, uh, Trump has been eviscerating the State Department. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He lost his Tillerson. Um, it's not clear, uh, you know, uh, that Tillerson's successor is going to be useful. Um, the, the whole thing is problematic because there is no State Department engagement right now in that area. So all we have is Trump making these threats and demands. Um, wouldn't it be better? I mean, forget about what the, you know, the, the past practice was, but wouldn't it be better as a practical matter to have discussions instead of threats, don't you think? Yeah, definitely we should have engaged in a dialogue. I think the Chinese prefer having a dialogue instead of uh, playing it uh, in the rough, playing hardball and try to, in terms of retaliative measures and uh, putting on these tariffs. But I think it's going to take roughly about six months on the line because right now they're going to give... Uh, some time to negotiate and see if we can come up with a uh, resolve this issue. So is he softening? Is that what it is? Uh, I think right now he just want to work it from the uh, you know see from the hard part and kind of soften up as we go. Is my, is my recollection good? I recall that when he first announced this, it was going to happen like a Monday. Bingo! Right now, today, mm -hmm. we're going to have uh, what was it? Uh, Twenty-five percent on steel and mm -hmm. was it ten percent on aluminum? 
um, all of a sudden, it was going to be within a matter of hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's six months. Uh, things have changed. Dave. Exactly, because you know you still got. I think got to go through the U.S. Uh, Congress, and uh, if they, especially if there was a trade agreement before. Any trade agreement that's in the, that's manifested through the U.S. Uh, uh, trade representative's office, uh, you have to go through the Congress if you want to change that trade agreement. But in this case, uh, with China, we did have uh, some kind of trade agreement with the tariffs, a percentage of country of origin, what commodities in terms of uh, U.S. customs regulations, in terms of liquidation process. So uh, those kind of things they have to look into and uh, see well, if we can work I hope Congress gets involved, because to have one man do this kind of um, you know, negative type bullying, may I use the, mm -hmm. the term, um, is, is not a way to conduct di diplomatic relations at any level. And Congress should get involved. I hope they get involved mm -hmm. on a more independent basis than they've been involved in some of his mm -hmm. other initiatives, mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing is, uh, uh, Jay, is you know, right now we're trying to negotiate with the North Korea, and then we need China's help. And I think the North Korean uh, leader is going to meet Kim and Un, uh, I think, in April of this month, in 27th, and see what kind of uh, peacekeeping measure, how they're going to try to resolve this issue as one Korea policy kind of effort. And from the May, I believe in the end of May, uh, Donald Trump is going to meet Kim and Un, but they haven't decided location yet. But uh, we don't want to— uh, Maybe it will be uh, Hawaii, huh? Yeah, possible. I know that uh, Representative uh, Gene Ward uh, is trying to wrote a letter to President Donald Trump. Uh, he's my good friend and my colleague of mine, and we we, we worked on a, uh, we had some dialogue about it and uh, come up with some kind of strategic measure for Hawaii. See if we can have host this meeting in Hawaii and get the uh, uh, the Pacific Command involved, and hopefully if we can host somewhere either at the East West Center or the Pacific uh, Security. Well, that would be something. That would be putting Hawaii on the map, wouldn't it? on a very important meeting like that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, in terms of uh, just showcasing what Hawaii is, and uh, if they do come up with some kind of uh, dis disarmament yeah. of their nuclear uh, weapons and you know, uh, weapons of mass destruction, uh, that would be great for Hawaii, and we can say that Hawaii is a peaceful, we are the, uh, a place for uh, bringing this kind of harmony here for the Asia-Pacific yeah, yeah. oh, region. the Aloha State. So, but back to the notion. So, if if um, if America needs uh, Xi Jinping to negotiate to soften uh, the position Kim Jong Un takes in these in this meeting now to come, um, then we shouldn't be pushing China around. We we need him, and if we push him around, we're not going to get his help, and that's going to cost us in terms of our attempt to deal with Kim Jong-un, isn't it? I mean, if you offend somebody, he's not going to help you, is he? Yeah, definitely. That's a, you know, the psychological effect that we're going to have. Any you know, human uh, being, we think, in terms of— uh, We are offending China is, now, obviously, don't you think? Uh, they don't like it. Xi Jinping doesn't like it, sees it as a mm -hmm. challenge. Uh, it's, it's, it's an adversarial relationship, at the least. Uh, we're, we're cruising toward a very negative relationship with them. Where a few years ago was very, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago was very positive. Mm -hmm. So we're we're playing with fire, I think. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Yeah, but you know, I think in terms of trade surplus, uh, I know China's have roughly over three hundred uh, billion dollars of trade surplus a year. So I know that uh, President Trump and the USTR's office were to kind of make sure that if we can cut down to uh, roughly hundred billion of the trade surpluses, and I think those are the measures that Donald Trump is taking right now to see if we can uh, bring down the the balance of the trade yeah. in terms of. Meanwhile, uh, trade. the trade surplus is going up. Exactly. I mean, right now, even after his threats, even after you know a year into his uh, administration, trade surplus is going up. He hasn't achieved much. And although uh, I suppose uh, you could say that the stock market has done pretty well in the past year, well, the, the, well, from January 20th, mm -hmm. 2017, till the end of the year, it was doing pretty well. But since the first of the year in 2018, it hasn't been doing so well. And, Right now, it's at levels, um, you know, no better than the first of the year. Yeah, plus I think he took down the corporate tax measure from 31 percent, bringing it up to 21 yeah. percent. So yeah. I think it uh, gives more leverage to the, uh, the corporations to— uh, They loved it. Yeah. So they loved it. The, the, the average people and the people who kind of look down the road and look to see the protection of the middle class mm -hmm. and the lower mm -hmm. classes, they don't love it at all. Mm -hmm. And so it's a matter of, may I say, greed. 
Um, but anyway, going back to uh, the point about the market, so the market has taken a deep dive lately. It's very volatile now. And I think business has become concerned with the effects of this tariff war and Trump's uh, tax. God, it's so isolationist. It's like the wall on Mexico. It's like sending the National Guard, mm -hmm. you know, to defend the defend the boundary with, a, with an allied nation. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound so swift. Mm -hmm. um, so, but here we are, Wall Street is losing confidence, it seems to me. Um, even big business is losing confidence because they're gonna be hurt by these tariffs and a tariff war. Uh, gee, when we come back from this break, Russell, I wanna ask you how that's all gonna work. Because to me, it sounds pretty scary. Maybe you're not scared, you're a courageous guy. We'll be right back. That's Russell Hanma. He's a senior uh, government official, senior U.S. official uh, on APEC in Hawaii. And we're talking about uh, Think Tech Asia. We're talking about uh, uh, retributive uh, tariffs, retaliatory tariffs um, on China, by China. And uh, we're talking about the escalation of what is emerging as a trade war all within the last few weeks, never a dull moment here in these United States. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're dealing with the retaliatory tariffs. Um, by China against uh, the United States and especially the Trump initiative. And Trump, who, you know, who really hasn't had a lot of uh, su support, I mean, he's, he's, he's reduced his support from the State Department and in fact from uh, economic advisors and he's doing this by himself. It's Trump economics, uh, Trump global economics, which is really a, another way of saying isolationism. So, you know, this, this is having an effect. Okay, so my, my first question is, what kind of effect is it having on China, if any? I think there's a great amount of chi uh, uh, impact to China. And I think within their, uh, even in Hawaii or in the mainland, a lot of Chinese Americans, you know, with having their descendants in China, coming from China or from Hong Kong, they're all worried that, because uh, they want to pr promote that goodwill relationship with the U.S.-China. I know that China is putting so much uh, pressure right now, and you know, with 25% uh, retaliation, are putting it within the, our pork and wine, and uh, some of its fruits and dry nuts and uh, produces that we produce here in, in, in terms of agriculture goods. Uh, now, just recently, uh, China is going to put imposing on our soil beans, and our soil beans are the major uh, export product that we produce in the uh, in the huge, heartlands yeah, yeah, and in right. the United States. We are a big producer of soybeans for sure. Yeah. And, and what you see now, even with the in, in retaliation from the U.S. side on the steel and aluminum, what you're seeing now is a lot of these companies that have manufacturing in China are trying to bring it back. For good, good, that good example would be like in Taiwan, all those investment that the Taiwan company, Taiwanese made in China uh, with their manufacturing plant, good act of like the Foxconn with the Apple phones. Now they were saying that maybe they want to bring some of these manufacturing back to Taiwan again. So you've seen that little trend now that, uh, that the Taiwanese are thinking about bringing some of these investment back from yeah, China. Taking advantage China. of the situation. Yes. This is all about taking advantage of a situation that Trump has created without realizing the ripple effect of what he's doing. You know? So, um, okay, so we, so we, our standard agricultural products, the ones we've been selling to China for decades, are, are now more expensive in China, and therefore China's not gonna buy as much of that. They'll find other sources for those products, maybe themselves, uh, who knows what, but we are not gonna be able to sell as much. Um, so, yes, uh, China may have, you know, the, the consumer in China may have to pay more for this, if, assuming it comes in at all. 
Um, and the American manufacturers, some of whom are very large companies, they're not going to be able to sell it because China is a huge market. Um, so we suffer. Do you, do you have a handle on how much we are suffering or will suffer uh, by virtue of this war? I think if you look at the numbers, there's like $300 billion of trade surplus that China has uh, in terms of trade. And, uh, but if you look at what China is going to try to do is, if they don't have the marketplace for the United States, they're going to focus on other countries, like in Australia has beef, poultry, and wine. New Zealand has dairy products, milk and cheese and other produces that they produce. So they can use their neighboring countries to bring in, and they have, uh, China already have a bilateral uh, type of free trade agreement with New Zealand, and they're working on a deal with uh, Australia, so uh, even with the ASEAN countries, yeah. so they're penetrating a lot of business with the ASEAN, with their neighboring countries right now. Yeah, it's so interesting because these, a lot of the, you know, New Zealand and Australia, they are our allies and our close allies for a long, long time. But this pits us against them. It means they're competing for the advantage that we have essentially given away. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may, it may not just revert back at the end of this war. Hopefully it'll end soon. It may be that when all the smoke clears, New Zealand and Australia will have a piece of China's market, and we won't have that. And we won't be able to get it back. And that will, that will be tremendous damage to the agricultural interests and companies in the U.S. who who won't find a market in China, or at least not the same dimensions of that market. This is really sad that we wind up competing with and disrupting relations with our own allies by doing this, no? Yeah, I think if you look at the uh, export-import regulation in terms of a performa invoice and the pricing structure between X factory, wholesale price, and uh, uh, retail price, and uh, based on the market, uh, in the United States, we from X factory to wholesale to retail. It's roughly about 33% in between, so the market uh, 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 pricing structure. But if you look at China, uh, if they're gonna, in, who's gonna pay that extra tariff? Is the exporters gonna pay it, or is it the importer, the consignee, How about the, the buyer? <laughs> who's gonna be the consumers? They might be saying, oh, made in USA product. Oh yeah, we gotta pay a little bit more since it's coming from the United States. But it's a behavior pattern, a consumer behavior pattern. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that might have a, a effect of getting the momentum back again. Yeah, and we talked about this too on our side of it, when we we're buying manufactured goods, because, you know, our strength, it seems to me, is in services. It's also in agriculture. We've talked about that. And in terms of manufactured goods, we import a lot of manufacture uh, from, from China. And uh, we're going to pay more for that. Um, so the, 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 end of the, the end of the day is American citizens are paying more for things that we're importing from China. Mm -hmm. So we get to pay the tariff. We get to pay it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? So you, you have a kind of, uh, um, you know, an increase in consu an inflationary experience because we use so much of their stuff, we're going to pay more for a lot of mm -hmm. manufactured goods come from China. And that'll be right through the food chain, right through the production chain, and it'll, it'll raise prices that, for any product that is touched by Chinese imports subject to these um, increased tariffs, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if you look at the... Uh the physical distribution uh, network. Uh, you know, most American companies, we start up their factories and we invested in, into China's soil and uh, invested in their capital. And then we start a factory, we train their workers and be able to come up with a, a viable, suitable product to be exported back to the U.S. Uh, that's because we're using Chinese labor. Labor is cheap. It's not like the Chinese corporations and businesses coming up with their own innovative idea and exporting it directly. But most of these imports that we bring in, like Colgate, Gillette, uh, some of these... And many, uh, many, many others. Exactly. Some of these companies like Kmart, uh, Walmart, you know, they have their own subsidiary companies in China that manufactures goods, especially plastic items. Huge and, yeah, low volume cost, of, uh, of stuff. Raw materials that's what... Yeah, so that, that means that if you put tariffs on the manufactured goods that come in, I mean, I don't know exactly what he's going to cover, um, then we, we pay more for everything here because we are so dependent on China. Now, now, the other element I think we need to cover is that this has an effect. You know, there are various government agencies taking positions against Chinese. Uh, they've made statements against Chinese, thinking, you know, saying the Chinese are all, they're all 
working for the Chinese government, even American Chinese working for the Chinese government um, in the nature of uh, uh, sending information back, in the nature of espionage, um, you know, and, and just generally building a wall again, uh, generally uh, exacerbating racial tension, uh, cultural tension in this country. Um, so it goes hand in glove when you start getting into arguments about trade you're also undermining the relationship of the countries. And in this case, because there are so many Chinese in this country, so many businesses that are owned by Chinese in this country, you know, you really go to another level of unhappiness and dissension and conflict and mm, um, all, those, all those things that are so mm -hmm, negative. Mm -hmm. right, right. And, and I'm, I am worried that what he does is he may not realize the secondary effect he's having on not the government relationship with China, but the relationship of the individual people in this country, how they see China. And for that matter, the relationship of the individual people in China and how they see this country. It's got to filter down to the man on the street, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's very important, especially for you doing an international transaction or in terms of uh, uh business relationship. I know that Chinese or so-called Asians are very attentive for a uh, people-to-people relation is very important. They want to see you, they want to wine and dine, uh, they want to see you, your personality, and uh, if you, they feel comfortable working with you, and uh, if they trust you, they're going to do it. But right now in the past, Chinese people didn't trust the Westerners. They even among the Chinese, Chinese uh, among working there, it's hard to get that trust because when it comes to business, they might cut you uh, short on the, under the table there. So it's kind of uh, uh, it's a it's, you know, catch-22 there. Yeah. Well, back in the early part of the 20th century, uh, the U.S. was pretty hard on China. Mm -hmm. So was Europe, for that mm -hmm. matter. And I think we built in a certain amount of... Um, of hostility there, which is probably still baked in somewhere, mm -hmm. and uh, we're not we're not resolving that at all. We're exacerbating that right now. Okay, we only have a minute left, but one more question, Russell, um, and that is this: What is Trump really after? Xi Jinping is uh, running the, the second biggest economy in the world. Xi Jinping has a huge military. Xi Jinping has great control around the country. Mm -hmm. Xi Jinping has a very supportive population even more these days than it was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and even with his mind control, you know, uh, the techniques that he's using. Fact is that um, he's a very strong leader and he's president for life, he got that thing through. Um, so you gotta give him credit for that, good or bad. Problem is, uh, he's, not gonna, he's not gonna bend over from Donald, for Donald mm -hmm. Trump, he's not gonna do it. Uh, you know, even if there are economic reasons to do it, there are, there are other reasons at play here. What can Trump hope to achieve by a trade war here? I think if you look at, because uh, I know he's like following the Reaganomics kind of concept. Uh, through my personal experience, uh, when I was engaged with the U.S.-Japan trade, and you know, in terms of tentative starting up the trade war, or in terms of uh, applying that uh, Section 301 of Countervail Duty Act and uh, imposing these tariffs on it, especially with automobile, uh, they had a lot of steel materials to be imported here. We had the high tech war here with Hitachi, IBM, NEC, and some of these 64 cam uh, K RAM chips for making these personal computers. And that back then, uh, Japan was controlling like 64 K RAM chips. So they're monopolizing the industry. So uh, that's when uh, they wanted to bring that in terms of openness and see if the Americans can be more competitive. And I think that he's trying to approach that similar kind of fashion with China. Maybe he wants China to realize, hey, we want you to play ball with us, and we want you to be part of our uh, come to the United States and be more civilized, be more open and uh, approach in that fashion, invest into our U.S. soil, but do it with due diligence and transparency and approach it in that manner. Yeah, not in an adversarial way. I mean, right. some of the things that China does are adversarial, mm -hmm. and uh, they're crafty, mm -hmm. clever, um, but they're not necessarily on a fair-footed a, a fair -footed basis. So maybe that's what he wants, but I'm, you know, question, last question, you only got a, a few seconds to answer. Is he going to be able to achieve that here? Uh, I don't think it's not going to happen. He might try to think that it's going to happen, but I think he set a tone, a message 
to Xi Jinping and uh, Chinese officials that uh, uh, we were willing, willing to play ball. But see what happens with the negotiators. I know our, our U.S. official that specializes in China and uh, Chinese officials are, are working on a deal right now and see if they can come up with a, uh, some kind of uh, measurement so they can work a deal with each other. Yeah. I'd be surprised myself because he's losing his allies. He's losing the you know, support of the American population, support of American business, support of American Chinese. Um, he's, he's, as in so many other things, he's alone. If you're alone, you don't have the same bar bargaining power uh, as when you have some friends around you. Anyway, Russell, thank you so much for coming around again. Appreciate it. Russell Hanma, yes. senior, um, senior, U.S. senior official uh, for APEC in Hawaii uh, here on ThinkTech Asia. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Jay.